Hello, everyone, Hi. and welcome back. <laughs> we have Chef Mike Harris here. Yes. yes. And in the field. <laughs> So excited. It's on my bucket list to visit this building. So <gasps> here you I can are. scratch that bad boy off. It very is. excited. The bucket has been yes. slain. Yes. Boom. Bam. I rolled well. You did? <laughs> awesome. So that how 20. many more things are on the bucket list? I like hundreds of things oh, I'll okay. never get. It's like do an Iron Man triathlon. No. no. This is way no. cool. Yeah, right. be, uh, you know. Yeah, I don't even know what's on that list anymore. Create a board game. That's going to take quite a while for me to do. Well, you're talking to the right wow. people. Yeah, oh, this man. is true. This yeah. is true. You can it it does take create a, a board game. Yeah. I I'm feel a, like you can do that in I'm an afternoon. I'm definitely more of an idea man. And then the yeah. you know the numbers and making sure it's balanced. I'll, I'll outsource that. I gotta, I'll you're hand the, that you're out the, to the, Yeah, the concept. Guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I see it. I like that. That's, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's a lot of what uh, D&D players are about. Like putting the ideas forth and then, yes. you know. All Just right. make it happen. Make it happen. Just make that happen. Why don't I see what the difficulty is? I like that. Yeah. So your background is as a chef. Yes. Obviously, professionally. In your name. Yes. Uh, it is in your name. I, it is, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had no like, choice but to go into the culinary arts. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, his thanks, name is Mom. Chef. Oh, man. Well, you really? named me yeah. Chef. So I'll you're Chef, Chef, Mike? <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mike is his middle name. <laughs> yeah, that, right. would be, that would be pretty awesome. I know. What is that joke from like Catch 22 where it's his name's Major and he becomes a major? Major, so major. Ma major, 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 major. Major, major. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. um, That's you. Um, and I didn't realize that Chef was like an honorific, like doctor or, you know. It is like a, a title of distinction. So I do have a degree in culinary arts and culinary nutrition. Damn. Um, but I am not, you know, there are chefs out there that even in public setting, like you you address me as chef. Yes. I'm also just Mike. I've you can call me just Mike too. All That's right. quite all right. But. All right, just Mike. We're glad you're awesome. here. No, just like regular chef. old Mike. Chef Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. chef. Um, but before like you it. were a chef, you mm -hmm. were a Dungeons and Dragons Absolutely. player. Absolutely. So I played a good bunch in like, let's say 96 to 98 ish. So mm -hmm. I graduated high school in 2002. So it was like junior high through high school. Oh. Then I went, yeah. Then I went to college <laughs> and got a little bit of away from it. Uh, but then the last five or so years, so I play in a three five edition, and I DM. I've been DMing for about a year and a half now, a fifth edition. Nice. Yeah, so, all right. Yeah, and I do probably we do like once a month, but we do eight to ten hour sessions oh, once what? a month. So we, yeah, yeah, we power through it. We spend a whole, you know, in our in my basement that gets all stanky from you know. People just sitting down there yep. eating pizza that's room temp because we ordered it earlier you and all that. Food? But, oh yeah, of you course. Don't, you don't. I'm busy doing the thing. Them? I can't be cooking and we were, be that was one of our. You know? We wondered if you do ever cook themed meals around your campaigns. Well, so in my game, it's if you bring uh, beverages, <gasps> usually alcoholic beverages or food, I give you extra experience points at the end of the session. That's excellent. so everyone starts bringing all this that's stuff, a great idea. and we have too many leftovers. So it's like I'm making money. And acquiring <laughs> food and drinks by uh, being a DM, so it's pretty awesome. I well, like it's a good little as setup. You should, that as is the pretty DM. cool. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, when so. you played uh, back when you were a kid, uh, what uh, what kind of what, what what drew you to it? What was your your your, your um, thing for it? It was I would always play with my brother and his friends, and oh, cool. obviously being the younger brother, I want to hang out with the older kids. Yeah. Um, but I grew up playing video games. My brother and I would play stuff like uh, Risk or even Axis and Allies. Hey, those first, are our games. Hey. But really, a bit. Oh yeah, a big uh, influence on me was Hero Quest. Yeah. So I played that with my dad and my brother. Um, we were big Lord of the Rings fans and all that stuff. So it really was just like everything that I love, a game and fantasy all in one. Um, I really enjoy the role playing part of it, being a character, creating the character and stuff like that. So that really, really drew me to it. That's pretty cool. Yep. Oh, yeah. And then you started this 3.5 campaign. Yeah. What's that one all about? You're so, DMing that? Uh, I am playing in that one. Oh, okay. So this was another one. My brother, um, we were talking about it, you know, four or five years ago, whatever it was. You guys still all live in the same area. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're that's all cool. in Schaumburg. In Schaumburg, Illinois. Schaumburg. Token, Schaumburg. If you've ever seen The Burbs, it's basically where we live. I Are you serious? Love Chicago, oh, it's, it's just Schaumburg. everything. Things the same chain restaurants. Was was it filmed? In no, no, no. It oh, was okay. not, but it looks like that where you look down the street and all the houses are the same, and it's like, oh, that's and you've neighbor. got like murderers down the street. I hope not. I haven't found any. I'm I, well, neighborhood watch is out. We're looking for it. That is one of my favorite movies. You just it is such randomly a great movie. like, oh, God. the incubus, the succubus, <laughs> Ray. You're chanting, Ray. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> we'll quote movies later. I that's want to kill everyone. everyone. Satan is good. Satan is my pal. High fives. Pow. Yeah. 
it's All one right. of those ones that was in like the VHS rotation and back Absolutely. when I was a kid, and I was like, the this is so good. It's such a great movie, and it's really Tom Hanks's last comedic role, uh, right? That he ever he did got real, real before serious? he went like yeah. straight into you know Forrest Gump in Philadelphia, but like he did that role, and then he's such a great, a serious movie. actor now. It's not um, as popular as it should be. It's so good. We so I'm so glad you referenced it. I kind of want to watch it now. It's Holy fantastic. Shit. It's right. so hilarious. Yeah, and it holds up. Uh, Corey Feldman is in it, and he is fantastic. Yes, called the pizza dude. I know, right? Like having like the stoner teenager next door. It's fantastic. Such a great uh, we'll add that to the list. It has nothing to do with Dungeons and Dragons, uh, but it is uh, 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 culturally, rele- culturally yes, absolutely. relevant. Absolutely. So yeah. I believe it was. I'm hanging out with uh, my brother. We were talking about wanting to play a game, but I guess a bunch of his friends already plays m- in multiple 3.5 campaigns. So yeah. we're like, okay, let's start one. Uh, we played that for a while, and then I got the hankering to be like, I want to create my own world in DM. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of Critical Role, like many folks are. Uh, funny story mm-hmm. is this had to be two years ago, maybe more. So me and some McDonald's folks went to Nerdist and Geek and Sundry office, and I was like, hey, guys, oh. we need to do something with this Critical Role group. Like I know a, they're not huge at the moment, but, oh. you know, you get into the company the and, and you go, ba- uh, yeah, I don't know. Like you guys went – on behalf of McDonald's? Or yeah, so me and the VP of comms and PR. Yeah. Oh, so we're like, how do we make that so up? I want to be a VP. So then, oh, nothing happens, nothing happens. And then what happens like uh, a year and a half, two years later, they make millions and millions of dollars on a Kickstarter. And I'm like, once again, Chef, you just listen to Chef Mike. Do what he says. You're the oracle. You're I am the, the oracle, oracle at Delphi. The hardest part is because I am a certified chef, and my uh, like PR and marketing is not, not my role in any capacity, and mm. it's McDonald's, a huge brand. So turning that ship uh, obviously did not uh, pan out like I wanted it. But I know, right? That's all right. God, we could have had here. some Happy Meal tags right? with like oh. Percy and that. Mick d and I wanted to do like a charity McDonald's game in the corporate office oh and do gosh. like a, you know, have some famous folk come in and well we're all down with that yeah. but now that I, you're mean, gone, I can still I, know, but I, I, can still, I know some people so yeah? I can still, I'll call it yeah. introduce yeah. me to that VP yeah I know Ronald me and Ronald we go way back <laughs> Ronnie. Hey. he's a total gamer totally he dude he's in costume all the time dude LARPs yeah. all the time yeah. so right. the Hamburglar is like the Obviously. original rogue There's, I mean hello we, we've got all the classes in all, uh, in all of our uh, characters um he's kind of a tank he's kind of a big thing you could just but like yeah. What is Grimace? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have you absolutely no idea. No. I just love that his name is Grimace. Is there like a style we've guide? We've never actually like right, really so touched them. I mean, they are highly, they're a very conservative company, so utilizing those characters in certain ways, like, I don't even know if they would allow the character to be in D&D because it would be like, oh, but then he's going to get attacked and might get injured, and we wouldn't want that to right. our oh, properties. That makes so sense. Like, so yeah, yeah. we'd figure somewhere. It'd be so how did uh, so uh, let's t- talk about your professional kind of mm-hmm. thing because I think that's pretty interesting. Is how do you get to to be you know sure. the, the, the role that you've been in? Oh yeah, right. So uh, you went to school for I culinary went to arts? school for culinary arts. I grew up you know cooking with mom and grandma and all that stuff. Started working in restaurants when I was fifteen, and I went into culinary school. Like man, I'm gonna open up my own restaurant, oh. be a famous chef. Then you get into culinary school, and you're like, the chances of your restaurant actually being successful is like 5%. You're working 80, 90 hours a week, and you have no life. And I was like... I don't. I don't want to be a chef. I don't want to open up my own restaurant. Right. That doesn't yeah. sound fun. What's so. that stat in like? Uh, uh, you know, something like four thousand restaurants open in New York City every year, and like most of them, 30, close. 39 and fifty yeah, of it them is fail. Your, your actual chance of success is very hard. It is a hard life, and more power. I I worked in restaurants for many years, but I was like, you know what? I want to have a life. So, um, the other fable is that i also wanted to be a guitar player in a metal band so my nights weekends and holidays i can't be slaving in the kitchen i need to melt faces <laughs> right so not just cheese not just right. cheese not ah. just melted cheese so cheese i went to day faces by melt and shredding and solo <laughs> <woo! Wow! laughs> doing all that kind oh, of stuff head banging combine those into like one like kind of rockabilly uh you know a huge event of food and metal music yeah. together yeah That'd be one, but once again, I'd have no life because I'd have to cook all the food, write all the songs, perform, clean up. But like I would delegate some of that. Yeah, well, you got to be the once I get to be the boss, then maybe I can do that. That's so. true. Yeah, but that's a one in you know yeah. a million chance. Yeah, I got it. Right? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm working on. It. I'm working. I'll see where I nice. where it gets. Do me, you still play guitar? 
I do. Yeah, I nice. still play guitar. I did a little cover stuff with my brother and uh, some other folks, but nothing too professional at the moment. It eats into my Dungeons and Dragons playing time. Oh. I know, right? right? You can only have so many hobbies, right? I can and my video games, and I have a, a child and another one on the way. Whoa. So Whoa. congratulations! Thank congratulations. you very much. I have a daughter and another one on the way. How so old is the daughter? Two years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Daddy's little girl, baby. And I'm you have another daughter coming? Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. I'm into it. A hundred percent. That's, I have, That's I have the two actually daughters. what I wanted. Because I can around also the reuse apart. all around the yeah. same, yeah. And I could reuse all their stuff for the first one. So it's like, hey, yeah, that's hey. yeah it's a much more affordable way to go. I My pl- youngest I planned it that yep. way. We have <laughs> cousins like uh-huh. a you know a handful of years older. So uh, some of this clothes that my youngest wore was like yep. on the fourth kid at that Smart. point. Yeah, that's what I. It's like. worthwhile. Like it makes yeah, sense. Oh, right, cool. That's really and you're right. It totally. There's no time when you have no, that's uh, true. three women telling you what to do. Yes, uh, which is why you get the one day a month to do eight out like. I'm just playing D and D today. I'm not even here. Go do whatever you want to do somewhere else. We're locked in the basement playing. So nice. Um, What's your setup like down there? Uh, I whenever I do a thing, so I'm the kind of guy that's like, okay, when I turn 30, I'm gonna learn how to golf, and I'm not gonna buy crappy golf clubs. I'm gonna get good golf clubs because I'm totally invested. But I don't. I'm not good, and I did it anyway, and I got great golf clubs. So I have a bunch of tables. I've got the computers. I've got um, a bunch of uh, toolboxes that click together to hold all my minis and oh, all my wow. books. Um, yeah, it's a it's a bitty production. I make sure that everything's set up before the players get there. Oh, nice. Chairs, you know, oh. drinks. I've got the beer fridge in the basement. Nice. I actually posted a video of like a walkthrough. I've got our map that we're playing with. So I got a, a cool Devin Rue poster that oh, we're sweet. using. For I was going to say it was a Devin Rue. Oh, thought. sure. I'll tell you. So, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute because that's how I created like the world. I did everything I do is very homebrew. Yeah. Just because. Um, I'm not the smartest. Wis- uh, intelligence is my dump stat, but <laughs> wisdom, you know, very yeah. high. I'm you got the feeling. You oh, got the intuition. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I got the beer fridge in the basement, and we. Uh, oh, that's pretty sweet. Up. Yeah. Do you do any um, uh, miniatures? Do you use miniatures? A lot? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Will you be using a walking statue? <laughs> that would be amazing. Nice. I would. I mean, our little guys proportionally would be crush it. But I did uh, for my game uh, in the three five that I play in. I play a. Uh, paladin, so I got a Hero Forge character with a chef hat on it. Oh, so but they recently just said you could get chef attire on your... So what? I was like, what is this happening? So now I'm going to have to spend more money on another miniature that I don't need, but I really want. So <laughs> Is this your... Is your uh, do you play a homebrewed character that is a chef? Um, no, not class? a chef. I do have plenty of ideas on making a chef character, but I uh, just for that game... I always like to pick my characters last because the party all wants to do, oh, we're going to have 10 fighters. Okay, well, then when we all get <laughs> smashed and everyone's going to die and no one's healing it. So I wait, and for whatever reason, in all the games i played, it's always been like, oh, you don't have a beefy tank who could stand in the middle and gather all the people around, you know, all the enemies around. So I'm usually a paladin. Um, and then in this game, I'm also, like I said, a tank, but... The gist is I acquire all the bad guys to attack me, and then I let our uh, our sorcerer and wizard just blow things up right around me. Oh, so I take like I take that him. damage, and but everyone else gets hit as well, so I'm just kind of like a magnet for destruction. It's awesome. Nice. That yeah. is pretty sweet. It's badass. I feel like a chef would badass. just inherently have like good tools for fighting. Absolutely. Like so a creme brulee torch. <laughs> That's a great idea. So if you want me to get into... Bake the last of your face. If you want, <laughs> pour a little sugar on there, caramelize that face up real nice. Mm, delicious. Wait, no, you're not going to actually eat the face, are you? you it depends. Might. It depends All what right. kind of care. Yeah. What if we're we'll lizard have, folk uh, or dragonborn, maybe <laughs> uh, you want to get in on that. So, Mmm, corpses. Yes, delicious. <laughs> we'll actually play... One of the things I had to bring up, uh, so my a guy I play with Gary, who is a lizard folk character, he's like, when you go in there, he was almost upset. He's like, oh, you're going to go to Wizard of the Coast? I'm like, oh, yeah. When you go in there, you tell them why lizard folk have no racial tra- uh, trait. Uh, tri- I can't even say it. Traits. That's the word. Traits. <laughs> Not tri- Why don't they have any <laughs> racial traits that uh, are along with the lizard folk cl- you know, character? I'm like, oh, I'll go ask. I don't know how much pull I'm going to have. <laughs> But I'll put the question well, out there. Well, now that you mentioned it, we're going to change it. That's we're, it? Yeah, right? Exactly. Get, them on a, so get the bosses you. in here. Hello. I will say. And ever, they will now be called triates, too. Triates. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't say that word. That was pretty. Because hey, you don't care about Gary's yeah, lizard folk. Yeah. You're just like, whatever. It happens. Just throw it that happens. guy meat. He just eats meat. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's a lizard Don't even have to cook it. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah he right? goes raw. It's a good um, diet. 
So, I mean, before we move on to to more D and D stuff, the uh, the whole idea right. of like a making uh, foods for McDonald's and coming up with new stuff mm-hmm. is really fascinating to me. Yes. So that's um, what your role was there. Yes. Yeah, so as oh. the uh, manager of culinary innovation, it was my job to come up with new things for the menu for the U.S. Um, so. As glamorous as it sounds, a lot of it would be behind mirrored glass serving people food oh, yeah. and getting their it's like opinions on it. A game. Oh yeah. A lot of documentation and paperwork. So I I would love to say I was in the kitchen all the time, but definitely not. Um, it's also not my job as a chef to influence like this is what you guys should have. I learn what you like and yeah. provide you the things that you like. So everyone, why did you take this thing away on the menu? I'm well, like, because like, nobody bought it. Like, but me and my three friends bought it all the time. Well, we serve 30 million plus people a day. So same thing. your four people are not buying enough. You need to go swipe that credit card. And people went more. crazy about McRib. Mm-hmm. People do. People yeah. do. Is uh, that still on the menu or did it come and go? It is a rotating, a uh, limited time offer. So what you see is every, oh, the McRib is back. Yeah. Awesome. They went nuts. And then they buy one the whole season. That's it. And that's it. A majority, just like pumpkin spice lattes. Right. Everyone, the season gets longer. It's something like 90% of people who really buy those buy one in that season they just want and are done. Fixed, and then so it's just more of the one time user in that season so we could get them. That's that's really the biggest money maker. There are people who love. I eat the McRib every day. That's great, but the numbers don't add up. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah and it is a lot like playtesting in kind of a way because there yeah. will be people who be so loud about like I love yeah. this particular yeah. feature. And the loudest, but you're like, but, but, but the data loudest. doesn't yeah. doesn't yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, have it out right. So and you're dealing you with such huge Absolutely. numbers. And we also have like our when the McRib is not brought back to nationwide. So our owner operators or the owner operators, since I'm no longer with McDonald's. Um, they actually vote on whether they want specific menu items back or not. So when it's like, oh, this year, 9,000 restaurants have the McRib. Well, what about, that's not in my location. And we're like, we as the corporate entity oh, wow. can't dictate that, that the restaurant has it. So, yeah, oh. so those owners. Own and, oh, yeah. So, I, yeah, even when I'd come up with a new thing, I'd have to sell it, like, internally. So not only are my customers the people who'd go in the restaurant, but, like, the owners and everyone else. You'd give them a stack of documents with, no, this is why you should do it. And now they're like, eh, mm. nah, I don't want to do it. Like, yeah. oh, great. Whole year of my time just wasted. Awesome. That actually reminds me a lot of the, like, distributor conferences and things that we do here at, right. at Dungeons & Dragons because it is the same thing. Like, we have to basically sell the product to the distributors, and they're going to buy it yep. to then get to the retail Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So it's that same same kind of process. Yeah, I think – and. Th- like once you understand sort of the R&D or product development process, whether it's cooking food, making awesome games, cars, computers, I think you can kind of like, oh, I understand how that business works now. Yeah. Because it's all the same, like a gold standard prototype. You know, you make a sketch of a cool character. Like here's just the outline of it. And then the whole process to get it in a book printed into a uh, consumer's hands. Like it's a it's a lengthy process. But you're right. There is it, it does transfer from yeah. different yeah. industries. Oh, yeah. Uh, one final thing. How do the fries taste so good? I know. What is going on? Is I there d- really sugar in there? Um, is it soy sauce? Is it soy sauce? Is it, throwing out well, is it umami? It's the, we just take TLC and those fries. So we <laughs> get those great potatoes. Uh, we cook them, uh, cook them, cut them appropriately, hold them for only a certain amount of time, certain amount of sauce. It's one of those legacy items that if we ever made a change, because of how much we sell, all these people would notice and they'd go bonkers. Yeah. Now, I know like Malcolm Gladwell talked about having uh, we used to fry them in beef tallow many, many years ago instead Uh-oh. of yeah, instead of regular oil. But then obviously we want people who are vegetarians. That's me, and man. Like, so you can still eat them. Are they vegetarian? They I believe they are vegetarian. So there is a beef flavor in them. But I don't believe that's derived from animal, so I'd have to. Oh, you have to ask them. I'm just gonna go ahead and say they're not, so then I'll stop eating them. Oh, you don't want to stop. I eating. go to McDonald's a lot just because I have a six-year-old. Oh yeah, and he loves McDonald's. Um, you know who I think the most talented people are on the planet? Who's that? The people who work the drive-through. Oh yeah. How oh, are they like taking your order and then like handing it, taking the order like, of this guy, but handing you your change? And, it'd like, be like no working at the post office, which just way, doesn't end. Way too much. Just way too doesn't many end. Things it just keeps happening. going. And the way they so the other thing that I'm a little bit known for is that whole Szechuan sauce thing with Rick and Morty. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys remember that. What happening. the what? We do know about the Rick and Mortys in the Szechuan sauce. We know about the Rick and yeah. Morty. So it was my that was you. That was my tweet that set the internet ablaze. Really? So it was we gave away like ten thousand bottles of Big Mac sauce 
and an owner or somebody tweeted at me. They're like, hey, if we give this away, shouldn't we give this was right when that uh, season one or season three episode one aired. Since we gave that sauce away, shouldn't we bring back Szechuan sauce? So I tweeted out, I'll see what I can do. 15 minutes later, 10,000 retweets later, the media is like, McDonald's chef is bringing back Szechuan sauce. Like, no, no, I never oh, said no. that. So, like, I handed my phone to the legal team and the PR group. I'm like, this is happening. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Wow. So, and then, obviously, we know how the story went. I engaged with Justin Roiland on Twitter. We talked. It was great. We give him jugs of sauce. Yada, yada, yada. We did not make enough in the restaurants then. Uh, the people were not happy. And I'll leave it at that. That's a, the right. people were not happy at that point. But that is true. I do. I remember that story. Yeah. Yes. But now I'm I'm remembering the uh, uh, the the before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Everything uh, was going of. real smooth. This was like right before uh, New York Comic Con was the week. Like the started that Thursday, and we were launching uh, the Szechuan sauce little collectible cups on a Saturday. And they were like, "Oh, should we send Chef Mike to Comic Con and walk around the show floor with like." helpers in a briefcase with like samples just to hand out oh my god and then all of the senior uh people at mcdonald's like rick and Ma- i don't even know this is not going to be a big thing ah we know this is going to be small blah, blah. And oh it was, it not was not like, it was not i small gave you enough. rick and morty i gave you critical role like what more Nothing. did i do just listen to chef mike <laughs> <laughs> He's the he's the oracle at yes, Delphi. I see. On. I'm the I'm the thirty thousand foot view of looking at things and where yeah. magic can happen. You're but. a diviner. Um, so are you a fan of Rick and Morty? Then? Absolutely. Nice. Oh, well, have we got the product for you. Oh, I'm very familiar with that product. I am very so familiar. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, do you think we can show him some stuff while he's here? I have a meeting at two where I have to like. That's all right. All right well, you, like, you can but, you can sit but, on that. That's fine. My meeting is. I'll re- take some notes to I'll review like, yeah, no, like all the Rick and Morty stuff. I, yeah. No, guys, this is what you should do. Listen to Chef no, Mike. He knows what you need to do is something or other. He got a prophecy given yeah. to him by yeah, Justin I Roiland. I don't need pay or anything. If I make you money, no big deal. I don't need credit. I just want to give back. I just give you give you it on a silver platter. I like that. I like that. Heck yeah. I like yeah. it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, we we're we're excited about the Rick and Morty uh, uh, so connection good. because yeah. we do know that there's people who are very active mm-hmm. uh, and as fans of both Rick very and Morty passionate. and of D and D, and so that uh, Venn diagram is is mm-hmm. going to be even more conjoined I'm once that product out comes out. It. Absolutely, That's nice, super exciting. Uh, what do we? What? So let me ask you this, uh, because I don't, I haven't watched any Rick and Morty episodes mm-hmm. ever. Uh, what do you think a D&D fan would get out of, uh, uh, A, the show, but then B, uh, playing a game uh, similar to what we're I think out? what I like about it is obviously it's off the wall and dark humor. And that aside, like it's so scatterbrained of different. It's almost like watching improv happen in real life. Like if uh, I also listen to uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern. So it's good. Like, yeah. And it's like they're just improving and making things happen. It's so off the wall. This connects with that sort of continuity within the story that it's just that brain of creativity of anything could happen. I'm learning as I go. You may actually know, you know, if you roll well, you actually knew about the history of something or other, but you didn't realize it until you rolled so well. And it, I feel like it's that same kind of like brain part of the brain that's that thinking that you do when you play Dungeons and Dragons is why I think a lot of those people like the show as well. But oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's just goofy. It's just it makes goofy, me laugh. Right. And it's got yeah. the references that. Uh, oh, that, so many. Yeah. So many. You're going to like this game. Uh, awesome. Shelly's so excited. You're confident. Like She's confident. I guarantee it. Take my <laughs> money now. <laughs> yeah, you can like have the my way money. you look. <laughs> go ahead, and I will reserve a copy. I'll give for you, you the cards. I'll give you all my cards. <laughs> One of them might not be maxed I'm out. Cash but only, please. Oh, awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple George Washingtons in here. That'll. Uh, Didn't we take like a training on this, Shelly? Oh, we can't you. do that. <laughs> Uh, Actually, I just took uh, one too. I can't be. Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, quid pro quo. Uh, quid pro quo can't be. No. Can't be a thing. I almost couldn't say that either. Awesome. But it's it all those fancy I words that we're coming say out it with here. Right? Not illegal. Uh, so <laughs> we were saying in the uh, intro for this that I played in an adventure uh, where I was dungeon master, uh, where uh, it dramatized a restaurant in the weeds. Pretty That's much, amazing. and then the characters came into it, and they kind of ha- had to help and, and and deal with it. But it was very uh, interesting to have that portrayed in a D and D adventure, awesome. and I really liked it. Um, mm-hmm. And I was wondering if there's other stuff 
that you might uh, experience in the culinary world or the food service or anything like that that uh, you don't see dramatized very much so in, in D&D type stuff. I want to make a whole class in Dungeons and Dragons for the culinary arts, the gastronom class. I think we talked about this a little okay. earlier. Yes. So tell us about it. If and I don't know if this is 100 percent true, but I heard that the Golden Girls <laughs> is a perfect adventuring party based off of their personalities. And that's kind of a framework as to. All right. This is a, a, an adventuring party. But you guys got to eat and you got nobody in your traveling party yeah. who's feeding the people. So gastronom class and this will give me two minutes to, to spew oh, this yeah. out. You've been thinking okay. about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's my dream. Gastronom class is going to be one of those classes where at third level you have a subclass. Yeah. First subclass is going to be a little more strength forward. So think of your line cook, like dirty white t shirt, mm -hmm. real big burly guy, like sweating oh, bullets. Yeah, just like used to Ugh. it. So if you want to use uh, the culinary person as more of a also fighter, that that would kind of be the subclass for you. Okay. Then you have, let's say, the culinarian. So you're like Gordon Ramsay, your fancy French chef who could kind of wine and dine and maybe do a little more charisma based character where you could influence people with the food or, or make money you go to a, a inn or a tavern that's the food's garbage you could go in the back make money that way almost like that bard performer type mm. so that would be a second subclass and the third one would like be Benny Hanna. oh well, yeah like hi, i'm doing the show or like a real swaz of friendship yeah i make you the best meal you ever had in your life open your mouth i throw yes. it <laughs> oh magic uh, and then the third one would be an R&D chef, a little more in my world where it's science and Ooh, yeah. food combinations. Oh. Yeah, the alchemist type where you're making poisons or potions or you can do oh, yeah. make like distractions for wild animals. So I, one of the uh, um, one of the things on one of the characters I wanted to do would be if I was a paladin, former paladin and I retired and I work in a barbecue restaurant and then I start getting back into fighting. Well, I smell delicious all the time, so I have disadvantage on all stealth rolls in nature because every animal like, or every mm. every person is like, I smell like, was that bacon? Was that hickory? Mm. Mm. Once so I have that kind of stench on me. But That's um, I used to work at Little Caesars Pizza, and mm -hmm. I used to come home pizza, pizza. smelling like peppers and onions like all the time. Yeah, so. so I definitely had disadvantage. All of your pets really enjoyed right, like, whenever you came to college. Uh. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to be the girl that smells like peppers and onions. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I'd it's a pizza. I would love to yeah. have side of a culinary type role where, um, you know, you could you could kind of break it down into different portions. Yeah. There's a lot of video games like uh, Breath of the Wild or Monster Hunter where you are cooking ahead of time using that for stats or advantages yeah. disadvantages so i like the idea of that and just a chef being kind of you know everybody can cook great that's awesome but there's more to being a chef so you need to organize your team to understand their strengths and weaknesses so it's almost a little more you're you're studying your group and you know how to tactician kind of put people where they need to be so that would be an interesting like role within an adventuring party i think that's pretty cool i like yeah. it i uh think th there's probably already uh, material like this oh absolutely and Guild i actually right i actually helped uh, a couple people with they they used me as some reference in right. some of the stuff okay doing. so i think oh, I, cool. that's why what you were describing oh, yeah. sounded a little bit familiar oh yeah uh i think that's that's badass i don't know necessarily that I mean, because so much about the class is about like how you do it to defeat monsters. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly how you'd uh, use the culinary arts to defeat monsters. It's more right. of a support class, like right? It'd be, be more yeah, about, like, more helping of support. Out your party. Like you need to be more well prepared. You're going into a battle. Well, the night before, I'm gonna like a hero's feast. I'm gonna yeah. prepare a meal. You, we have advantages to whatever. Maybe you have to stay up all night and you're guarding your camp. Well, I'm gonna make you something that'll like. You're going to be alert and ready to rock, but maybe afterwards that you crash and burn, like you got to sleep all day. Yeah. Um, you know, poisons and things that maybe health potions instead of a health potion, it's now like edible type things that can, you know, so oh, there's, edibles. Yeah, yeah there's quite a yeah. quite a bit of stuff. I think uh, I think it would work really well as a background too, just as like, okay, oh, yeah. you, you oh, are yeah. you oh, have absolutely. a fighter and everything like that, but yeah. then, you know, that's where you came That up. would be cool. That's where you got, you know, everybody has stories of what they were like working in restaurants and things like that. So oh, like it, it kind of informs uh, yep. uh, their entire identity to a certain that extent. That would be well, cool. Yeah. Nathan, cool. Our, our boss, always um, plays, his character is usually a pastry chef. <laughs> awesome. I feel like he would love, he'd be all on board. He would be, yeah. yeah. He does like the food I believe connection. a cake yes. in the face of a dragon might do some damage, right? Yeah. 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 Maybe a little... Them. 
No, Psychic like, damage, pause. maybe. Yeah. Like, Unless they're like yeah, gluten intolerant. The they're like, oh, that, oh, one point of damage Fire. for distress, uh, digestional, digestional distress or something of that right. nature. You can like actually have egg on their face. And just, oh, <laughs> I feel shame. <laughs> Aww. Aww. That's literal D10. egg on the face. That yes. is how it's described. That's it's the, literally <laughs> egg on the face. <laughs> but you have to, it's hard to do. You got to get sure, that dexterity, get it right on their gotta face. Got to roll good. Yeah, it's yeah. all about the roll of the dice. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I also love that the chat is basically saying how the Golden Girls map to characters here. So. Wait, what, I was, I've been thinking about it. Yeah, have what you been? They, what have they come up with? Uh, I don't know. The only thing that really stands out for me is that Sophia has vicious mockery uh, as a hundred percent. And I'm like, Fact. Yeah, that is very true. She will tear you up. So <laughs> my daughter, my two-year-old daughter is named Sophia Rose. No way. For two of the Golden Girls. Wait. Really, hundred percent. My wife, my boy. wife is obsessed with the Golden Girls. Oh wow! So our daughter is literally named for two characters of the Golden Girls. Oh That's my god! Great. Yep. You didn't want to go for Dorothy Blands? That's the next one. Yeah. That's the next oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a little more old timey name. Yeah. It didn't sound we as nice, but Dottie B. Dottie, Dottie B. B. That's good. We'll, we'll use that as a nickname. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I liked it. I know. Uh, Blanche. I, Blanche. I know, right? It's such a. Yeah. Yeah. Blanche. But I, my, my daughter's name's Edna. So, you know, I, that's I'm, a, I'm that's all a in on the, on the old Golden Girls I like names. That. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Um,. I feel like I was going to go to another topic and I forget what it was. Oh, uh, yeah. Speaking of Nathan and uh, uh, running the uh, Adamantine Chef adventure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love that because it was this whole framework of having a uh, an Iron Chef-like competition. But awesome. in a fantasy uh, yes. realm and trying to help Sign out me up. and win on that type of things. Um, I've always wanted to do a, um, uh Iron Game Designer where you provide people I a basket of... Uh, components or maybe a theme or maybe like a thing that you have to include in your game and then over the course of an hour or however long it is like you have to design a game that is that genius. like that, that mystery basket kind it'd be of a really thing. fun segment that yeah. would be awesome like here yeah here's a um like a component of the story that needs to be weaved into it like this is all as long as this is in it you succeed or whatever it is that would be a lot of fun. That yeah, would be a lot of fun. I know. And uh, Lisa Penrose is already kind of running with that idea with the uh, DMs Guild Design Dash nice. that we've been doing here on the D and D channel yeah. once a month. They did their first episode last month, so it's taking that and uh, doing it on an episodic uh, type thing. I think it's going to be super. I fun. am very confident and understand that any idea I have has probably already been done. Like I am not the creative. You know, here's a new thing no one's ever heard of. Like, I'm always like, oh, we should do a thing. And then you look it up. That ah, somebody's already done. Sure. Like, Come yeah. On. But that's a fallacy to a certain extent because, right, right, right. you know, everything's already been done before. Sure. It's all about uh, new combinations. It's all about them. actually yeah. doing it. Right. I Getting mean, like, it, yeah. a lot of people might Man, have the idea. But that's what I'm slacking on the doing yeah, of it. Yeah, it's the execution. Man. Yeah. It's like those people be like, well, I have a good idea for a movie. And <laughs> no, one, uh, but no one's like, ever done What if, like, idea. the monster is actually the good guy in the end? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Brains exploded. Ah, awesome. Uh, they usually are the good guys, though. You know, where they think they are. They think they are. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the best bad guy is one that thinks that they're being a good guy. Um, so tell me about your home brew world. Yes. What, what have you been cooking up? So, <laughs> ah, yeah, ah, points. I see what you did there. So when I wanted to start a game, I was like, and my brain is always like. I'm much better at creating it myself than like kind of learning the Lord. You know, you guys are amazing with the amounts of stories and background. And I'm like, I just want to like come up with my own world. So mm -hmm. how do I start? What do I do? So I had no idea. I was like, oh, I'm going to start by I need to make my own map. So I was looking at programs to make a map. But then I came across uh, Devin Rue's website where she has these posters. Yeah. So I was like, I started looking at some of her maps and there was this uh, Euphoro Peninsula map. And up in the right hand corner, there was a little like island with something that said Arcane Tower. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to use this as my world and then start building each city. You know how I want this adventure, what the background story is. Oh, that's cool. So I got that first. But then I used a lot of the books like um, for I use more of them for reference. So like if I want a city and the background of it, I might steal some info from a city that's already you know published in one of the books, but change it around. So a lot of the players that I'm playing with are well more experienced than I am. Mm. I have a couple players who are like, oh, that's on page 157. Or they're like, oh, this is oh, yeah. like cool. I'm not going to throw monsters that you're familiar with because you will know. And even though you're not supposed to, you know, you're supposed to pretend like you don't know what the uh, weaknesses of that monster Metagaming are. Metagaming can happen you even kinda, unconsciously. You kind of do. So I throw, you know, brand spanking new stuff at them. 
Um, so I came up with this world, came up with the background, came up with an overall story. Then I told the players, give me a background. It could be anything in the D&D world that I will then figure out how to tie back into our playable map. Um, and then I was like, make sure that you all have kind of a, a negative or a crutch or something that you don't tell the other players, but they may be able to find out oh, while that's... actively playing. Mm. So um, I thought that part was I really love fun. That stuff. Oh, absolutely. Having a flaw. Oh, 100 percent. Like uh, we have somebody who can't really hold a secret. We've got somebody and I can't give too much away because they're going to listen. But uh, we've got a uh, Asimir character who has some interesting background that might tie in. And I don't know crazy oh cool um and then the other big thing i always wanted to do is try to make an emotional connection with the player so early on in the game and my brother is one of the players his name is hondo lone star you could imagine mm. what kind of character he is the han solo type um <laughs> orphaned you know did not know his parents he was born with just a letter from his mother that called him like her lone star she always thinks about him the space ball reference no, right yeah. that was good that yeah. was tied on a bunch right. of stuff so then, yada, 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 early on in the game, they have to do something to steal um, something from a neighboring town. The venturing party does it. They accidentally steal his long-lost mother's pendant. Uh, it's a Lone oh, Star no. pendant. Oh, no. The person that she was enslaved to, you know, injured her enough where she then passed away in my brother's <gasps> arms. Like, this oh, is your long-lost God. mother that you just found, and she just passed away You're in your arms. You're a terrible arm. person. Why did you do that? Because... Now with that emotional connect, like I almost started crying just saying this to like my brother and stuff. And you see all that. This was like the second game and everyone's just sitting there like, <sighs> because oh, once man. you have that emotional connection to a character and you continue playing, my brother wants some vengeance. He is now like, I'm going to find out that I'm going to find that guy and I'm going to end him in the worst way. Wow. So this is like motivation for all the players to be like, oh, man, oh, you know, like kind of w once you. It is fun to just go in a dungeon and kill everything, but when it's like I need retaliation or retribution for what they did to me, yeah. then there's there's games where I'll sit back for like a half hour and listen to them talk in character, and I'm like, this is amazing. That's like the, the most fun for me of it's on autopilot because the world I've created and the story, it's like just, just live in it. And I'm just going to be the, uh, you know, puppet be, master, yeah, puppet master, just kind of, you know, moving you along and throwing other ridiculous things in the way. So, yeah, I, I hit him hard real early. So. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. How now this has been going on for a year, It's probably a year and a half now or something like that. I think they're at levels another eight or nine at the moment. Wow. Yeah. So I like I said, we'll do eight, ten hour sessions and just go to town so is this the same crew that you're doing your 3.5 just with? about there's like one or two swaps um so we've got uh yeah one gentleman who only plays in the three five and then a different gentleman alex who plays in the 5e but it's generally the same same people so yeah interesting 3.5 was the addition i learned how to play D, D on a lot of math a lot of math yeah in, in eberron in eberron mm. yeah in sharn city That's of awesome. towers yeah <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, well, and that brings me back to what you were saying about the, the, the chef character. Like, I feel like that would be a really good setting for something like that, uh, especially one that could use, oh, yeah. use magic and stuff to do, uh, somewhat, uh, you know, more mundane things that a cook would take sure. care of, but then having inventions and things like that's a way to bring in a little bit more of the stuff you might be doing, uh, in Heck your yeah. present day. Heck yeah. I, I would imagine that there's a lot of players out there in their games where it's like, Oh, do you have rations on you when you were traveling? Oh, no. right. Who might not focus on that? Well, then you could have that background of a character where, Hey, one ration, I could now make that in that to feed the whole party. So I only need oh. one ration. So to sort of conserve that, um, assist with like hunting and stuff and i do like the idea of kind of a butcher type chef culinary background so i may only have two knives but i know how to oh, fillet the yeah, heck out yeah. of i know where all your important arteries are so i can actually cause a lot of damage with my two little chef knives because i'm experienced in butcher uh, butchery so, like, you yep, know the anatomy yep. of, oh, yeah. of where best to cause the yeah. most damage. i kind of feel you taking like big stock pot um Hand or lids and using them as swords, or shields, shields. And blood, shields. yeah, sorry, bing, shields. Bing, and a little yep. ladle, pow. Yes, <laughs> blood there you force go. on the head. But. I can just picture this <laughs> yeah. adorable little character. I like that, but I want to be a must be a halfling or a yeah. gnome. Yeah, right? yeah, a little. Yeah. Bing. Ah. That's hilarious. I do like that for sure. Yeah. Um, and I like the idea of extending the rations too, because that's um, a lot of the yeah. things that I love about uh, uh, adventuring in 
lands that have lack of resources. I just like the idea of being able to have to fight to right. Get, like, to hey, get you guys are going to starve. You need to go hunt, right. and then you know maybe that uh, gastronom character knows how to. Um, lure out, you know, we can make kind of like a, a, a nice scent for whatever kind of, you know, werewolf might be hiding there. So I'll use that as a little Ooh, distraction. Like yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So stink right. bombs and stuff. Do all kinds maybe of it stuff. is a whole class. Maybe I'm like, there's maybe I'm going back. Right? I think there there's is. a lot of things yeah. you can do. I think, I, I, yeah, I guess part of me was like, do you want to have swords and things like that? But, you know, you don't, you, know, you, you could, uh, it's a fantasy yeah. world. You can do whatever you absolutely. want. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's what I like about this game is that you can, in, in put as much uh, interest into it as possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we talked earlier about like creating a meal uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as the dungeon master. Uh, I was telling Shelly I had a dungeon master who did that once at a, uh, a scene in the game that was at a ball or a masquerade or something like that and, awesome. or, or like a, a feast and uh, he actually created the dishes and brought them out. That's awesome. They were terrible. They were not very of good course. or tasty uh, or even looked good. But it was. <laughs> but was that it, because he, like, he just wasn't a good cook or no, was he yes. really like trying to like... Uh, he's not a good cook. Okay. Oh. But he was oh. trying and he followed the recipe that but it didn't really work. Like you only can use what you have on you as your adventuring party. So I got a pot, uh, maybe <laughs> salt, maybe and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, nice. but, I, but even though uh, the execution of it wasn't as awesome, I I just loved the idea of bringing something real world uh, to the table and actually having, you know, as you said, gaming and, and eating goes together really, yeah, there really was well. One thing I was going to do in a game, it already passed, so I don't think I'm ever going to do it again. So if they're listening, they don't have to worry about it. But okay, I was going to no make spoilers. I was gonna make like jungle juice or a punch or whatever, right? And yeah. Before everyone's coming in, oh, yeah, I made some juice. Oh, cool. You want some? Oh, no, I'll pass. Okay, great. In the game... It'll be like that same scenario. Everybody who drank the juice uh, when you came in, you are all poisoned. Oh, like, oh, oh wait, I oh, ate the thing, no. But then Coach they'll be Emma. like, every time they come in, they'll no longer eat the food or drink the beer. So. <laughs> well, they might get bonuses, though. Oh, yeah, that's they true. Do. That's oh, my God, true. that brings up a... Uh, uh, so I played uh, Dungeons & Dragons in college with a group uh, for the first... Uh, I don't know. We played like maybe four sessions. It was a Dungeon Master and her... Uh, boyfriend was the first time that he had ever played he was a writer type guy so he really nice. like liked the creativity of making a character and they got really latched on to this character Very in the cool. backstory and he was she was running an old school adventure she was it was during the second edition era but i think she was doing a first edition uh thing and they in the adventure they go to it and they see uh it was a dungeon lots of people dying and things like that but then you enter in a room and there's a feast laid out in front of you and it's just like that like oh you want one of these things and different mechanical effects happen if you ate di different awesome. foods and uh, uh, he chose one of the foods, and she's like, yep, uh, you're dead. Boom. Yep. Oh. Go He's like, well, I don't even get to roll or anything. Like, nope, that's what the adventure says. And the game broke after that. No one wanted to play oh, real because nice. he was they so mad <laughs> that this character, he, it was his wow. first introduction to D&D. &D, so he's like, that stinks. I yeah. like this game. Yeah, I think there was a lot of dynamics with them being boyfriend, girlfriend, too. Yeah, there too. might have been yeah, some, it was something a thing. else happening. It was a thing. Is uh, that a good dungeon master or a bad dungeon master? Like I it, think it was an adventure, and the and, well, I we I mean, moved like, past that. I think as a like you do no, you do something and you're dead immediately type thing. I think no one really likes that. Yeah, save oh, yeah. or die type type. Especially uh, how much feel. time you may have you know put in making the I background mean, like, of your character. Like, ah, a, throw it away. It's a new player who clearly loves their character, and you're the dungeon master. Like you have. Don't, you might have like a little creative freedom to be like, oh, you're like really injured. You better yeah. get some healing instead of like. Instant death, TPK. Like just even because to I go feel through, like, like the <laughs> saving, <laughs> the death saves is still stressful and not yeah, not a great experience. Maybe but I think that's why they were put in so that yes. it wasn't just something like that. You uh, you had ways to be able to do it, and if you chose not to react to it, then you might have permanent death. But you brought up a great idea for our gastronome character that with the sense of taste and smell and oh. all that, detecting poisons, yes. like understand, oh, you know, yeah. like maybe have a little more like Wolverine type awareness of like sensory attributes. Attributes around the it. area. We're, we're making our own character. We're, I like so that. It's gonna be a whole class, right? By the time, like a food taster yeah, for, for yeah. the king. That's where that That's could be where you background. were employed, right? So yeah. you're the chef, but you're also making sure that you're not po that the king's not poisoned. When you roll really well, is you are immune to your own poison. So you're like, here, look at. No, I'm fine. Here Ooh. you go, King. Oh. What happened? I tasted it. What I spent happened? the last ten years of my life yes. uh, slowly building up an immunity to iodine powder. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. Oh, right. So you actually can be like an expert poisoner mm -hmm. too if you wanted to mm -hmm. go that route. Maybe that's one of the subclasses. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. I'll do some writing. I'll do some work. I'll send do some, work some, on I'll that. some. You're the idea guy, though. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Internet, do your thing. Make it no. happen. <laughs> like I said, I think there are already tons of stuff oh, yeah. up on Absolutely. DMs Guild. We're giving uh, him so a lot more ideas there. to nice. play with. 
Um, so we've got you know a couple minutes left here, but what's uh, what's next for for Chef Mike? So I uh, well, like I said, I have a new gig now. So I've been uh, with this company called Bell Flavors for about a week, but a it week? will well, a whole week, a whole one week. You're like later, I gotta go. Yeah, I got town. things to do. Um, but this will allow me to create new menu items for a lot of different supermarkets and different restaurants. So stuff that I've created now will no longer just be McDonald's. It may be at a variety of different places. Oh, you got to keep cool. us posted. Oh, absolutely. I and what a uh, chef make. Sure. And ultimately what I want to do cuz I do want to become internet famous, obviously. You know, I bother right. Wizards D&D on, You're not uh, already? on Twitter. No. Psh, nobody knows who I am just yet. I'm working on it. Um, but <laughs> how do I get You were bringing up like a uh, the brands playing a D&D game. Like I am more than happy to try to figure out how to facilitate that, how to get more people to enjoy the game, um, you know, get invited to uh, a Matt Mercer and Stephen Colbert one I shot. Like, I want to do a, stuff Oh, yeah, I'll do whatever. You should be thinking about, like, D&D storylines and, like, products that – meals that you could be putting out in supermarkets and restaurants. That, that, that might hilarious. be – You know, like, that's weird. I went to um, – uh, Going shopping for my uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus game. Yeah. And I like, right. I, like, there's like this whole line of like super spicy right. foods. Or if you or get or the like uh, Vox Machina Slayer cakes, you know, get that I actually mean, in make it the for store. Real. That people, would be unbelievable. Like, be like, uh, there will be people who like get it and other people are like, that's a great idea. Yeah, like, oh, cool. Oh, it's done at Dungeons and Dragons. Like, but the real fans will be like, I know what that yeah. is. Well, that's what legitimizes it. I mean, that's the whole. You know, you go into PR and talk about who your targets are. You don't want to talk the, you know, I want everything new right away. And you don't want your average folk. You want those people who will convince everybody like, oh, that's legit. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are the people you want to it's target. It's delicious. So. Doesn't, you know, D&D, that's cool, too. Yeah, but, but like no, it's, it's actually so delicious, too. Yeah, I know, right? What about events? Would you ever do like a, I mean, I've been talking about, you know, themed meals and things like that for storylines and things like oh. that. I think that would be really cool. I would love Could to do that. Could be a new addition to D&D Live. That's what oh, I'm big thinking. Dinner, big An family style feast. dinner. Ooh, yeah. And then like, yeah, we work on Themed. what's the story going in, you yeah. know, with the game. So at least ties in. And this is what like Owlbear tastes like. Hey, 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 he, he oh. didn't mean that little Be delicious. This is, what, this is what Goblin tastes like. Mm. That's okay. Rancid. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm, cool oh, no. And then if it's bad, I'm like, I purposely did that. <laughs> yep. Right? Uh, yeah, I right. Know. This basilisk. Yeah, uh, yeah makes I can't. Me... I don't want to. I can't use like real nice ingredients. That's not what they had. So it's boiled. Mm. Um, oh, in a, boiled. In a, yeah, on a campfire. Uh, yummy. Who yummy. do you think yeah. would have better food, Aberon or Forgotten Realms? Um, or actually, which setting do you think would have the best? I food? just think, well, if. I would do it more by race. So I would think the elves would be more of kind of like French cuisine, high, classy. You'd have... But um, very small portions. Oh, of course. Like, oh, yeah. Not, like, oh, a little I'm nice. For that. Fit. Just like how uh, French would. You know, you'd have dwarves that would be definitely like rugged, big meals, lots of meat, stuff like that. Um, everyone knows halflings. You know, it's depicted in movies and how that would work. But it would be interesting to see like... Uh, different classes, like let's say dragonborns, what kind of meals do they have? You know, they're obviously gonna probably eat a lot of meat, but maybe there's some vegetarians out there. Maybe there's, um, you know, whatever. But then how those different races and cultures kind of work together? Like we have Tex-Mex. Right. So what would an oh. elfish and dwarvish meal that's kind that's of fused I, together? I what would that look like? Yeah, elf, no, that would be elf crazy. Dwarven fusion. That would because be because like you'd get like a bigger portion, but like probably of a really Right, like it's a buttery, delicious, you know, experience. short ribs right now are very expensive, but they used to be a peasant food. So now it's OK. I'm going to do short ribs and elvish, you know, like nice greens and herbs. Probably in it, something no? with foam. Oh, yeah. The very gas. Yeah. yeah. Molecular the gastronomy. Yeah, they're foam. very into. And then oh, alchemists, man. you know, can do also like, oh, you know, spherical foods and foods that look like other things. And delicious and oh, get into the, uh, oh, yeah. the, the science stuff, oh, yeah. stuff that's out there now. Oh, my gosh. I'm liking this more and more. So I would probably, as opposed to, and, you know, to, to your point of the setting, if it's a coastal area, obviously they're going to be heavy on right. seafood and things like that. If they're in, you know, a dense forest, maybe there's a lot more bird and game birds and things of that nature and, See, and I wild just like, boars. I like the idea of, like, at, like, just when we do, like, settings and stuff, like, really, like, digging into, like, the culinary culture of all of these places, it's, too. If you, and that tells such a, even in, you know, the real world, in different parts of the world, that tells so much a story of the history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, there's a potato famine in Ireland. 
Ireland. Oh, why did that happen? Well, they're landlocked, and their importing and exporting of foods is uh, slow. There was war at the time, so all they had were potatoes. It grows great up there. And then they all lost of a sudden it, it didn't all. didn't work. All right. right, now what do you do? Well, that's why there was some issues there, or... You know, different ingredients that were popular, maybe that were like uh, cash cows for different cultures. Well, we've exhausted our resources of whatever. So now we used to live on quinoa, and now we only have white rice. Uh, what are we going to do? So, oh, man, I lots of quinoa. Right. Yeah, quinoa. It's hard quinoa to go right from, from quinoa to white rice. Right. It really is. No. There's no taste. Once you've had the right. quinoa. Yeah, it's, it's just so much better. Nutritionally dense. So once you leave it, my you, kid you does just not, only carbs. My oh. kid does not like brown rice, and it's always like, what are you doing? It's so much more flavor. So n- like, you yep. like nuts. nuts. It's, it's nutty. got that like kind of nutty, yeah. crispy flavor. And she's like, no, I just want white rice with no. tons of sauce on it. I'm like, mm. of course. Yeah. Well, they like sauce. Well. They do like the Szechuan sauce. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> That's always good. With mostly sriracha just all over there everything. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So we've got like four different ideas of things that we're going to yep. work on going forward. Right, I'm add it to the list. Where can, I know I am too. Uh, where can we find out about all these things as they happen as well as what you're doing? My for big shtick is Twitter. So Mike underscore Harris, and that's H-A-R-A-C-Z. It's spelled just like it sounds. Yes. I'm also on the old <laughs> Facebook and the old Instagram. And if you're a professional uh, brand that wants to try to get a Dungeons and Dragons game going, you can find me on LinkedIn too. I use it. Can no. You, no one here uses LinkedIn. Oh, you got it? All right. Other than me. One person has One <laughs> person like, yeah, I've heard of that. Um, so, yeah, you can find me on there. Um, I'm probably going to be out doing more. You know, well, I've got other things that I may be doing in the future. So I'm sure I'll be around. So Sweet. All right. Well, awesome. Yeah. Hope you come awesome. back to Seattle. Anytime. You, you give me the invite, I'm here. I'll I'll trek. You know, I'll I'll just find a way to get here. Find a way. Somebody's paying for me to come here. I don't know who it's going <laughs> to be. If it has to be me, I'll do it. But Chef Mike will find a way. Chef Mike. Always. Nice. Always. Awesome. Well, thank it. you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. Uh, very really much. exciting. Good conversation. And uh, we are going to close it out. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here watching live okay, on Twitch. Uh, thanks again to uh, Chef Mike and everybody here putting this together. Brian we are not going to record a, uh, a B segment here from 2 to 3 p.m. Because we got one extra, and uh, hey. I have a plane to catch, so uh, that's the yeah. real reason I need Where to get. Where you going? To, I'm going to Florida. Oh, now yeah. you're going? Yeah, yeah, oh. right now. So cool. see you later. Bye. <laughs> I'm out. No, no, no. I'm going to be there until Wednesday uh, uh, next week, and so no D and D news uh, next week. Uh, so will be a video on demand for that. But I'll be back to record a whole bunch of Dragon Talk here on Friday without Shelly. Um, but you have all these special guests. Where we got lots of more special people here uh, to 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 lift each other up. When, when you're not here. I'll lift you up in spirit. Uh, you you want to call in? <laughs> no. No. Oh. Uh, all right. So there will be no calling in. But uh, So you got an extra hour here. We got Binwin Plays, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, coming up at 3 p.m. And stick around for Tales from the Mists, happening at 4 p.m. Uh, with some amazing folks, uh, some of which are in the chat right now. So uh, TK will be DMing there, and then Lisa Penrose and a lot of other fun folks. Stick around, watch that at 4 p.m. And uh, there's a lot of great things going on here on the D&D Twitch channel this weekend. Uh, but we'll be back for fun stuff next week. We'll see you later. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.